Hello traders, uh, hello traders, uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, bonjour, bonsoir mes amis, good morning, good morning, good morning, uh, for those of you who are new to us, uh, we are the TSTWSYS008 uh, traders for Elliott Wave Trading, www.24elliottwave.com for general trading, www.stochastic-macd.com uh, this video is for educational purposes only, is neither a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any financial uh, instrument. Very, very important, okay? The title of this video is uh, the first step about how to use the WAVE uh, principle. All right? So this video, okay, is being recorded because uh, a member of uh, 24 Elliott Waves have ask has asked two essential questions all right so all right very important question the first question was that okay let's go through it i'm going to start drawing lines on this chart okay so pay attention carefully so the first question was that if we have the first wave okay and then we have a second wave all right that has cancelled the first wave Okay, can we still uh, okay continue to count the wave? In another way, what usually take place, if I explain the trader carefully, is that sometimes you will see that uh, you have the first wave like this, and then when the second wave is underway, you have uh, a candle, okay, a candle with uh, a long tail, which means the prime may go down all the way here, only to close. All right, pay attention carefully to this. This is a very, very important question that a trader has asked. So you see, the first, the second wave is underway like this, and then sometimes you'll see a, the last candle or a candle during the second wave will push all the way down and cancel the first wave, but will close up here. That's why I draw the vertical line. So this vertical line is representing a candle, okay, a candlestick, okay, bar with a long tail. And the tail has gone past or has canceled, okay, the uh, first wave. So this is the beginning, pay attention carefully, okay, the beginning of the first wave. This is the end of uh, the first wave. As the second wave is underway, we have a different type of candlestick bar, but somewhere here, we have one particular candle with a long tail that the, the tail going beyond the beginning of the first wave. Do we still consider the second wave, okay, as a valid second wave? Because remember, this is very important. I need to stress on this so you get the picture. Remember that the, though the candle has a long tail, the candle has closed somewhere here. That's why we see, we put uh, the, the spot here to highlight where the candle has closed. But remember, the candle has a long tail that went beyond the beginning of uh, the first wave. Do we consider this uh, second wave as a second wave that has canceled the first wave? That's the first question. You see, very interesting question. Very intelligent question. The next question is that what the opening bell has to do with uh, the area wave count. Does the opening bell, okay, has uh, anything to do with the wave count? Because what we say to traders, we say to day traders, especially day traders, to pay attention to the opening bell. Now the question that the trader is asking, does the opening bell have something to do with the Elliott wave counts? So two questions. First one, do we consider this as an invalid second wave because there is a candle with a long tail which went beyond the starting point of the first wave? I need to remind traders that the title of the video is the first step about how to use the wave principle. Now, let's go back to the wave principle. One of the rules of the earlier wave principle stated that, okay, the second wave must not cancel 
the first wave, which means it shouldn't be 100% retracement. So if we have a first wave like this, we should, we should not have a second wave that went down all the way to the beginning of the first wave. So this is the first wave from here to here, and the second wave from here to here. All right? But the question that the gentleman was asking is very interesting because though the candle that went beyond the beginning of the first wave has not closed, okay, beyond the beginning of the first wave. So it went down all the way here, but quickly, people quickly bought it and closed up here. Do we consider this as an invalid second wave? Does this, okay, violate the wave principle that is telling us that the second wave must not go beyond <laughs> the, the first wave? How do we handle that? Okay, you see, the, you know the questions now? Let's start, this is the first step, okay? So because when we start counting wave, okay, when we start using the Elliott wave principle, we must count first the first wave, then the second wave. That's why I say the first step. This is a typical, okay, situation, a, a day trading challenge or swing trading challenge that the earlier wave trader very often will go through. So if you declare this, this second wave as an invalid, but it's not invalid, okay, that's not very good, okay? You want to know whether it's valid or invalid, okay? How do we handle that? All right? How do we handle that, okay? Without violating, okay, the earlier wave principle, all right? So here we are, I'm looking at, uh, okay, price line groups, okay? This is American stock right here, price line. The APIC is PCLN, okay? Papa, Charlie, Lima, November, okay? This is American stock. We are on a monthly chart, very important for traders to know the time frame, the monthly chart, all right? We are the monthly chart, so you can look at it. If you are using also TC2000, so, the guidance that I told traders on our website that the first in your wave is the wave that usually will break out of the consolidation zone after a correction. So very often you'll have something like this. Okay, so you have a okay a motive wave. If you don't know motive wave, which means you have to go to our website and learn more. Okay? The motive wave is formed of the five wave, first wave, second wave, third wave fourth wave and a fifth wave, that's the multi wave. But the earlier wave cycle is formed of the multi wave plus the correction phase, all right? So if you have a multi wave, which means a trending phase, all right, are you with me? And then we have a correction, okay? Bringing the price down around the zone of 61.8 of the previous trend. So this is an earlier wave cycle, the multi wave plus the correction. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to color this, okay, into red, so you can see that this is the correction. So the trending phase, which we call the multi wave, plus the correction, and then very often you will see that the prime may display all, all kind of a Fibonacci pattern, or we may have, okay, a consolidation, which means the prime will go horizontal. So an earlier wave cycle is completed, okay. Trending first, correction, and then we have consolidation, or we go into Fibonacci patterns. All right, either we have a consolidation and a new cycle is beginning, or we may have okay uh, Fibonacci patterns. All right, so, so there was a trend, there was a correction, the area where cycle is finished, and then we have a kind of a blah 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 called a consolidation, and then a new okay cycle is starting again. And the first wave will break out of the consolidation zone like this, okay? According to the wave principle, the second wave must not cancel, okay, the first wave, all right? So let's go back to this chart, okay, price line. You can see that this is, uh, okay, a correction, price went down, see here, blah, blah, blah. So there was a trend before that. You can't see the whole thing, but if you go to the yearly chart, I think we can see it there. Okay, it's not very clear here. You see the price went down here. Okay, and then we have a consolidation, yes or no. Can you see the line that I draw on the monthly chart? Okay, have a consolidation. Let's go back again to the monthly chart. I want you to understand the cycle. Okay, motive way, correction, 
Okay, either we go into Fibonacci patterns or we have a consolidation, and then a new cycle is starting again. All right, I'm going to remove Salai so you can stay focused. Okay, and I want traders okay to pay attention and to watch the full length of this video. As always, if you have any more questions, please send them in, okay, and we will try to record other tutorial, okay, to answer these questions. Okay, please, if you send a question, know that I receive it. And, okay, I will, okay, in due time, okay, post a video, okay, be very patient, okay, all right? So now, what's happened? So this stock here, you can see that it went down, and then we have a consolidation here, yes or no? Price went horizontal. This is what I see on this monthly chart, okay, with the information that I have. That's all I can see. It looks like consolidation to me on a monthly chart, okay? And then we see that the price break out of the consolidation zone, which is the gray line here. Are you with me? Am I talking to myself? So this is, uh, according to my guidelines, I would definitely call this the first wave. In fact, I have recorded a video before uh, about this uh, stock, all these lines, I draw them in the past, I still have them in my chart, all this. So I will call label this the first wave. Now, before we continue, I need to say to traders that always, when you are counting a wave, just draw it as you see it first. That's your first wave count. And then put it aside, don't 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 be too excited about it. Just put it aside, and now and then use different time frame to validate your wave count. Okay, so like here, I label this first wave. All right. So as the price is here that time, if I was not here that time, okay, that's different. But if I was here that time and I see this like this, I'll say first wave. But I will not know how far the second wave will go. So as you can see here, the price went down here. You see this session here? I will call the second wave, but look carefully. Let's remove my drawing here, remove my line now, okay? You see that uh, I draw my line, the green line, from inside, okay, the channel. Sometimes you will have a first wave that starts from the channel. So I draw it from here, okay? But if I draw it from the top here, I will have said that, okay? I will have said that the first wave the second wave have cancelled because it's almost, you see here, if I count, if I draw my green line from the top of the consolidation, I will see that it has almost cancelled it. But that's not what we want to see. What we are looking for, the question that the gentleman asked, sometime the, the second wave will go down like this, and then the, maybe the last, the last candle or one of the candle of the second wave will push down like this, we have a long tail. This is my kind of long tail. Call this like a long tail, okay? This line that this vertical line. But then as it goes down all the way here, it will not close bearishly here. It will, people will quickly buy it and push it back up here. Okay, we push it up, okay, so that it looks like it doesn't cancel it. But what is going to somebody who is counting the wave, looking at the tail of this candle, the person may think that, okay, the second wave has cancelled. The first wave. How do we know that the second wave did not cancel it? Okay, we're going to answer that question now. The first thing that we need to know is uh, to try to find out why, okay, why we, that candle was volatile. What has caused this candle to have that long tail? We want to know. Now, Sometimes you may not know. Suppose it's today that you are counting this wave on this chart. So that was uh, in the 2008. So you're not going to have any idea why the price went down here and quickly closed there. All right. But if, for instance, you were day trading or you were here that time and you see you count this as a first wave, okay, and then you see it pulling back. All right. And then suddenly you see this long tail like this. You need to know why that particular candle that went beyond the beginning of the first wave, okay, went beyond the beginning of the first wave. You want to know why. There are different reasons why a candle may be volatile or a second wave may have a long tail but close according to the earlier wave principle. You understand? So one of the reasons can be, okay, a major economy news, all right? 
a major echo. If you want a daily chart or you want a four hour chart or an hourly chart and we have like a no farm day or some uh, volatile economy news or some, uh, okay, for some very important economy news that was bearish, for instance, the price may go down, okay? It, it, is, the, the, it's, it candle may have a long tail. But now why the candle quickly close up? That's the one next thing we want to know. The reason why the candle closed up is because there were some people who thought that this stock shouldn't go down all the way down here. So there are demand to buy. That's why the candle, you see the tail of this candle here. So the, this candle here, see open here. It went down all the way here. This one, the red one also went down here. But it quickly pushed it back up, which means there are people buying here. You see all these candles, they have the tail like this. So somebody is buying here. Otherwise, this candle will have closed somewhere down here. The bearish candle, especially the bearish one, will have closed somewhere here. But if the candle is bearish, as you see, it's bearish, with a long tail going down like this, all right, we want to know why. Okay? If, for instance, the long tail candle is due by the fact that the company give a bearish warning, for instance, that they miss the analyst forecast, or... Uh, they are struggling to make uh, more sales or gain more market share or the market should, did not believe that the stock uh, should be bullish, that they, they should, uh, okay, uh, the stock should, should go up more, uh, the price should, shouldn't should rise beyond a certain level. Uh, we want to know why. But if it was, okay, a bearish warning given by the company itself, and the candle was has a long tail which went beyond the starting point on the first wave if we are considering okay this uh, second wave as a valid wave we must be very very careful why because there were fundamental reasons why the stock went down okay but other people decided to buy it and it closed uh, up again within the range, okay, of uh, the first wave. Sometime, it can be that another market leader, for instance, Google or Apple, or another market leader like ESO Mobile or Boeing, or is a decision made by the Federal Reserve, the Central Bank, or a natural catastrophe, okay, something that has a, a, a direct, a, an indirect uh, impact on the market, and the market was bearish, and it went down quickly, but has nothing to do with the fundamental of this stock. So if, for instance, we find out the cause of the long tail has nothing to do with the fundamental of a price line, we may decide it, okay, to label this as a valid a second way. But you can simplify everything that I'm saying here and use a different strategy. Whenever we see a long tail like this, and we draw our second, we validate the second wave with a long tail that went beyond the beginning of the first wave, we must be very careful. That's all I can say to you. So whenever you see it or you accept it as a valid second wave, though it has a long tail that went beyond the beginning of the first wave, be cautious. That's all I can say to you. There is a reason why the prime went beyond the beginning of the first wave, which is not supposed to do, all right? then we need to proceed with caution. That's why I say to traders, your first wave count, okay, is not your preferred wave count. It's just uh, the beginning of your wave count. You draw the wave and you just put it aside. So you will have done like this, like I've done here. When I was drawing here, I was careful. I knew that it was a bit close. It looks like a, if, if I draw it from the top, it looks like it cancel it. But if I draw it from inside, because you can see that the price start rising from inside and continue all the way up here. But I'm careful. So I know that, okay, everything didn't line up as I would expect it, okay? But I accept it. That's why I say to trader that the most important trading tool is the trader. So you understand what is taking place. You understand why you label a second wave, but you are not completely satisfied. Look. Nothing is 100% perfect in this life. Sometimes you may see some distortions, but you want to know the reason why. Another thing you need to understand is that if it was okay, a fundamental reason relating to the stock that you are trading that brought the price down beyond the beginning of the first wave, 
In that case, proceed with extreme caution. All right? Do not discount it. Know that there's something that tell. Sometimes, due to other economy news that are now directly connected to the stock or the financial instrument that we are trading, a candlestick may have a long tail that went beyond the beginning of the first wave, okay? So we know that we go to Google Finance, we check the fundamental, we do the acid test, okay? The market environment, we use the trading triangle, we know that, okay, the market is surface in a bullish cycle, okay? And, okay, the sector, probably the sector itself is also bullish. This is the sector sector that we should buy. And we see a stock that is displaying the second way with a long tail. And we check, we verify that, okay, the reason why we have this long tail has nothing to do with this sector, has nothing to do with uh, this uh, uh, stock itself, okay? But if the reason why this, the candle has a long tail that went beyond the beginning of the first wave, is connected to a market leader in that sector, we need to be careful. What do I mean by that? Suppose you are trading a tech stock and uh, Apple came out with an extreme bearish warning and uh, everybody was selling the, 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 the tech stock. And you build, but you check the fundamental of this stock, nothing is telling you that you should sell it. But because a market leader, talking about the trading triangle, in that sector gave a warning, a fundamental warning, yeah? If the cause of the long tail is related to a market leader in that sector, we have to be careful again. Otherwise, it's like we are violating the training triangle. At the end of the day, the wave count is just a guideline, it's not a science. Everything else that we are doing, we must okay, decide whether we like it or we don't like it. All right? Why do you want to buy the stock? Okay. Okay, that's the question you want to, why do you need to buy it, okay? Is the stock expensive? Is it cheap? What is the market cycle? Is what is the market, global market environment? In 2008, it was bearish. The stock was bearish also. You see, 2008, the financial crisis is normal, so it was bearish, okay, like everybody. In 2009, the Federal Reserve started printing money, and the money was pumped into the stock market, and the commodity market, a new move has started here. So, we understand that this is not a cancellation, so I'm happy to accept that this is a valid second wave because in 2008, I know why, most of the stock went down. So this one also went down. In 2009, most of the stock in America started going up and this one also started going up. So my wave count, looking at the market environment and what has happened, I'm happy with this wave count. I hope I have answered your question. So this is why you need to do, why? find out why, and yourself make a decision, are you happy with why? Okay, the reason why it, it can went on. Sometimes it's just because it can be a distortion. Sometimes brokers want to buy at a better price. And uh, a lot of things are going on, it can be market manipulation, somebody forced the price down to buy at the best price. I can tell you now, it happening in this market when a uh, uh, market manipulation can be that. I suppose I want to buy here, okay? I want to buy here. But the time that I realize I should buy here, which is the best price I want to buy, remember, whenever you want to buy, you want to buy at the best price. This most sophisticated market participant do not buy at any price. Remember that. They always buy at a specific price or at a better price. So they will say to their broker, I want to buy X, or they use their software, to buy the stocks, okay, pension fund, okay, hedge funds, they buy at a specific price or below, okay. All right. So suppose I want to buy here, okay, and the stock is just up here. But I say I want to buy. If I can force the stock here, I'm happy to buy. So what, how do I play that? I can set my computers, all right, limit order buy, okay, here. So set my computers to buy 2 million share at the red line when the price reaches this level, all right? But the price is already here. So if I have a tool that allow me to force the price here, what's going to happen? The price is going to drop here, and because I literally this place with orders to buy, place here, buy here, because this is the best price for me to buy. So 
I can place others here, limit others here with my computers or my software by here also. Anything below, buy because I know that this company uh, has a long feature. Their, their feature prospects go, they're going to gain more market share, their product is excellent, and I don't see why I shouldn't buy it. And I'm bad. I don't want to buy at any price. I want to buy at my best price, not above it or below. So as the price here, or suppose the price going down gently, 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 down a little bit. If it come here, though I want to buy, I may just, if I can move this market, I can sell it. People will think that, okay, it's buried. I may sell it, forming a long tail. But because I've already placed orders here, as the price was dropping down like this, what's going to happen? Or the fields, or the fields, or the fields, or the fields, quickly, my orders here will be filled, and the stock will crawl back up here. All right? It's going on in this messy market. It's going on all the time, okay? So sometimes it can be a distortion or a market manipulation, or somebody wants to buy the best price, or it can just be uh, another economy news, or it can also be a real fundamental okay, concerning this uh, stock itself. But we want to know why this, uh, the long candle. So once you find out why you have the long candle, sometimes you may not know why. In that case, you just label it second well, but you know it behind your head that, uh, okay, I don't know why this thing have a long tail, but okay, let's go with it, because at that, at, like I said to you, the wave count is dynamic, yes or no? So when we are here, we don't know what the price will do next, isn't it? Yes? So we're just taking one step at a time, following our guidelines, simple. All right? So this is how we handle this, uh, the long tail when we see that it's too long, all right? hope I have answered that question, okay? All right. The next question was that, uh, does, uh, okay, the opening bell has something to do with the wave count? Not directly, but indirectly, together with uh, the market pattern. I'm very surprised uh, with this question because these are very, very interesting question. And as I said to traders, I have nothing to hide when it comes to India Whale. I do not have uh, any secret, and I will answer any question uh, relating to Elliot Whale. Uh, that's why I'm posting this video to answer okay, all these questions. So, yes, there are some connections between the opening bell and okay, uh, the wave count. Okay, I'm going to show you now. Uh, especially for traders that are trading forex, okay. If you trade forex, pay attention. Very often, what I say to traders: do not trade the Asia session. That's what I recommend. But if you want to trade the Asia session, uh, especially if you are, I'm talking to forex traders, if you're trading the Asia session because you are trading forex in the night, okay. Trade forex after okay. Hong Kong is open at two a.m. London time, okay. Two a.m. London time, okay. All right, that's uh, 9 uh, okay, uh, p.m. Eastern time. So usually during the Asia session, if you are trading for it, you'll see the market does not go anywhere. In fact, you'll see that the price will be consolidating during the Asia session. So you will see it on a 30 minute chart or the hourly chart. Uh, I find that because in the past I trade for us all night long. I would trade uh, the Sometimes I don't even sleep very much, so I stay overnight and I will trade for us, for us all night, and then I will stay up and trade in London session until I fall asleep on my on my desk or something like that. It was a crazy, okay? So I don't think it's uh, the right way forward. So and then the next day I look at the price and I see that in fact the price didn't go anywhere. That's what I say to traders: it's pointless go to bed, have some nice sleep, and wait until London is open to enjoy your forest trading. So you will see very often, when London is open, highlight the Asia session. And what you will see very often, you will see that the price will be consolidating, you will have a kind of range, all right? Price will be stuck between two levels. And then, after London is open, what do we usually see? You see a breakout. So when we see that, how do we call it? We call this first wave. Because a new day has begun, 
Okay, You're talking about if you use the daily candle as a motive, suppose you use one candle as a motive way, okay? So there was a consolidation and the loan is open. Or a market is open if you are trading stock, a market is open. But before a market opens, you notice that the price was consolidating, okay? And suddenly, as London opened, more traders come into the market, professionals start trading, and you see that the price will break out of the Asia session. If you trade for it, pay attention to it on the 30-minute chart and also on the hourly chart. You will see sometimes, not always, ladies and gentlemen, let me say this again, not always, okay? Some days, it's so beautiful, you will see that the opening bell has something to do with Elio Wave. You will see a breakout like this, okay, of the Asia session, and the price will pull back gently like this, and then we will label that second wave, and then as the market is progressing, the price will go like this, okay, and then we will label it third wave. We don't know that uh, everything will work perfectly for us, but as the price is moving, we just say, okay, it moved up from here to here, and then it went down from here to here, and then it goes up from here to here. We just this is our first wave coming, just keep going. And some days, you'll be surprised, the price, as you see the consolidation like this, you break up and then pull back, and then sometimes even you'll see that, as you are asking the question, that the second wave sometimes may go even inside, okay, the first wave, but we quickly close up. Sometimes it may not. You just label it and just keep eyes on it and keep going. Some. This is very important for traders to understand. Sometimes, let me express this to you, sometimes you may see that the price will go completely down like this on the 30-minute chart and also on the uh, hourly chart or sometimes you come to the media line of the channel. Just label it and uh, put a question mark on it and uh, leave it as it is. And you will see sometimes the price will do something like this and you go with a long move like this and then you just go, okay. And then you pull back again like this and then it goes up like this, and then you say one, two, three, four, five, and what the next thing that you see is that the trend line is broken. After that, the price will break below the trend line of this move. So you go consolidation one, two, three, four, five, and then it pull back, and then you see a kind of correction. So sometimes. When the market is consolidation, especially the forex market, there was a consolidation before a market opened. You may see that the price may break out and then pull back and then display, okay, five in your way like this, as I show you here. For traders that are trading stocks, sometimes because Friday, as I show to trader, how to day trade on Friday, which is a video that we're going to post on our George Trio channel on YouTube. You will see sometime on Fridays, Friday is usually a very short day, so the market, uh, uh, the stock market will open at uh, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time to 30 p.m. London Time, and uh, after one hour or two, the market will go into a consolidation mode. So after two hours, when, okay, on Friday, very often you see that, uh, market open on Friday, and then after two hours, what we see is just the price will be consolidating. So. The, from uh, okay, from the first two hours when the market is open on Friday, you may see that the price may be consolidation. You will see some stock will do exactly that, consolidate until the market is closed on Friday. All right, so consolidation. So first two hours you may see a move up and then the price going to consolidation for the rest of the day on Friday. Pay attention on Friday. And then come Monday, okay, come Monday, you see suddenly, sometimes some stock will gap up like this, or even gap up. So which we will label first wave, probably will go fast, 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 up like this. Label it first wave. Now the question is that, does the opening bell have something to do with the earlier wave count? This is what I see. Now, is he, does it make sense to you? All right, I don't know. It may not, okay? But you may see very often that if on Friday, sometimes some stock will consolidate and come Monday, they will break out like this and then do exactly what I show you here. One, two, three, four, five. And then break the trail line and then come back down. Tell me, does it make sense? All right, does it make sense? All right. Or sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, don't think that every time that you see a breakout like this is a valid breakout. There are false breakouts. 
If sometimes that's why we do not use one time frame alone, you may see that on a two hour chart, on a you may see that on a 30 minute chart and also on an hourly chart, go to the higher time frame. Sometimes you the prime may consolidate like this on a 30 minute or on an hourly chart, and then you see a breakout like this, you say, Yes, that's what Judge said. But if you are using one time frame alone, you don't check the higher time frame, you can get into trouble, all right? So be curious, go to the weekly chart, monthly chart, see where you are. Sometimes the primary break out like this. What the price is doing is just looking for uh, the resistance. So the price will go, break out like this. So there's a consolidation, blah, 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 blah. And then it break out like this, only to go to a resistance level. The next thing that you see, the price will come back down. This is a false breakout. So if you pay attention, you'll see that the price will go like this and then come back below the consolidation. All right, be careful. So don't think that all the time, all the time that you see a break like this is going to go up. Know where you are, check the higher time frame. Are we in a resistance zone? Are we in a support level? Is the price trying to reach a convergent point or a target price? Don't be bullish when the professional are ready to sell. And you will see the price will quickly, if it's a resistance or a convergent point, the price will quickly come back below, okay, the consolidation. So now we will call this move, in fact, the first wave, not this one. And then you see something like this, you come back again and test, okay, the base of the consolidation, and then one, two, three, four, five to the downside. at the opening bell, all right? So it's not always when it break out, it's valid. The same thing is true if you're going to have a downtrend, some stock you may see, and then you'll be consolidating, blah, 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 blah. And as the market opens, what do you see? Okay, it will break below it like this. So we label it first well, and then we'll try to pull, even go inside or something like this, and then come back down, and then display five move down after the consolidation. After the consolidation. So the guide, if we follow the guidelines very often, if you see a stock, okay, especially you see usually on Monday, which means on Friday you see consolidation, or sometimes during the week, all right, because of some major economy news, the stock may be consolidating, consolidating, consolidating for some time. You may see on a 30 minute chart, on the hourly chart, verify where you are from a higher time frame. Are we on a resistance or in a support zone? Don't violate the market pattern. This is the, uh, the key to make better decisions. So if you are using the area wave, but you are violating the market patterns, and you are not using a top down trading method, you're going to go round, 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 round. It's not because you do not understand, okay, the area wave principle. Sometimes they know the area wave pattern, they understand the area wave theory, but they don't know how to apply, okay, the market patterns, the rising channel, the declining channel, from the higher time frame to the lower time frame. And they get into trouble. They don't know how to apply the trading drill, the setup, the signal, and the low risk entry point. And they get into trouble. But the question that you have asked, which is, uh, okay, does the opening bell have something to do with area wave? To a certain degree, yes. This is the demonstration of what is going on. Sometimes we have a five move after the consolidation before a market is open. You will see that. So, especially if you are trading forex, or if you are trading a stock, on Friday, the market may be consolidating, or one particular day can be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the market may be consolidating, consolidating, okay? This is what traders are talking about, the inside bar. So you may see one day the price bullish. So one particular day you have a bullish candle. And the next day and the following day, it's just a consolidation. All right. And then uh, again, we have a breakout. So sometimes you may see one particular day stock is consolidating. And then on the opening bell, okay, on the opening bell, boom. Okay. Check where you are. Are you in a resistance or in a supposal to avoid the false breakout or the false breakdown? This strategy will be very, very excellent, okay? Uh, will offer high probability trades, okay? If we see, for instance, okay, major indices like uh, the Dow Jones, okay, 
or the FTSE 100, or the CAC 40, or the DAX 30, okay, or the NASDAQ 100 index, consolidating one particular day. All right? And then the following day, we see that the market itself, or the S&P 500, break out of the consolidation zone. If we see other stocks doing the same thing, game on. We follow it. We don't assume anything. We go one step at a time. Another thing I need to mention here to traders, I have answered the two questions, is that, okay, as you can see on this chart, okay, that I draw the first wave like this and I draw the second wave. Then we have, after the second wave, we have one, two, three, four, five more. I'm going to remove some line here so you can see what I'm going to talk about because it is also important for traders to understand that, okay, uh, because this video is about the first steps, okay, about how to use the wave principle. As we learn the wave principle, which is a theory, it's a theory, it's a theory, all right? Now, when we are applying the theory, sometimes we face some difficult, okay, a challenge, all right? So, this is what we are trying to do. How do we handle it, okay? And, uh, when a, a second wave has a long, a candle in the second wave has a long tail that went beyond the beginning of the first wave. Is the wave principle still valid? Now, it's bringing us back again to the trader. You are the decision maker. What do you think? Find out why the stock went down and behave the way it behaves. Is it a distortion? Is it a market manipulation? Is it because of the economy news? Is it relating to the fundamental or the financial instrument? But as we are applying one method, we shouldn't forget, okay, other things that we have learned. You can learn um, 100 trading methods, you can learn the Fibonacci pattern, the Elio wave pattern, you can uh, be TSCW24 trader, you can have a proprietary trading tool, but there are things that we call the market stable data, things that remain intact in this market. You don't want to violate them. And, what, and uh, the, for example, okay, the market patterns, you don't want to violate the market patterns. You want to use all the time a top-down trading method, okay? So if you are counting a wave on one time frame, you will check the higher time frame to validate the wave. So your first wave count is to the side, and then now your second wave count, you want to dig in and make sure everything is right. But sometimes things are not perfect as you have asked the question, and it's down to you to know what's going on. As I was telling you here, when we were here, the stock went down like this and started going up. So at this point in time, this is what I'm saying to trade, the wave count is dynamic. We don't know what the problem will do next. Whether the third wave will be a complex wave, whether the third wave will be extended, normally it should be extended, but sometimes it's not. So when we were here, you may think that this is the third wave, yes or no, you may think that this is the third wave, and then this is pulling back, you see here? It's pulling back here, okay? All right, so you will see here, pay attention. If I draw a line here, so the fourth wave, okay, should not overlap the first wave. All right, you see here, all right, shouldn't come into the range of the first wave, you see, shouldn't come down all the way here. So, you see, so. You see that uh, the account I labeled this first wave and the second wave. So at this point in time, I will be saying this is the third wave, okay? All right? And then she's pulling back. Now, it didn't go into the range of the first wave, which is good. All right, stop here nicely. Sometimes you may have the same situation again. You may have a long tail. Find out why you have a long tail. Label it cautiously and proceed with caution, okay? Very important. And just go step by step without violating the trend. You don't want to use any method that is violating a trend. Draw your channels and just go step by step. Understand the definition of the uptrend. Is the price displaying higher lows, higher high? What's going on? So at this point in time, we say this is the fourth wave. And then we say this is the fifth wave. So you understand? So if you were here following the stock price line, you have said, okay, when you were, you were here, you say that this is, okay, the fifth wave. But then look, and then the price went down again, and then went back to display a new high high. Now, is this a flat correction or what? So you start, we are on a monthly chart, okay? 
So he started wondering what's going on. But now, and again, he pulled back here with a pink line, and then continued to move to the upside. You see? So as you are drawing the wave, go step by step. Label it as it's going on steadily, but don't stop on one time frame. Look on a higher time frame. Because if you switch to the <laughs> yearly chart, you will know straight away that what's going on here is a complex wave. All right, let's go to the yearly chart. For instance, if you were there, on the yearly chart, you will see that you have this consolidation here, and then the price came out of it. And then you have this red candle, because we are on the yearly chart, this is what we were calling the second wave. And then you see, it start going up, it start going up, start going up. But look here, there was an extension taking place here. The price start going up fast now, isn't it? Okay? But as we are counting the wave, the information that we have, we have to use it one step at a time, without assuming anything, without going ahead of the price. So now, with everything now, because the price has already done what it has, is doing, I can label my, my team better now. I may say that, okay, this move from here to here is another impulsive way, because the internal way, if I call it this in red, we will say that, okay, this move, this red move from here, to here has been divided into five internal way or five subway. One, two, three, four, five. Without violating the earlier wave principle, each wave structure is within the wave principle. All right. So we will say, okay. So probably George is not the end of the fifth wave here, but so you see now, because we are going step step by step by step. Okay, so we were there, we thought that it was the fifth way, but it's not. But if you go to the yearly chart, you have noticed that, no, it's, it can't be the fifth way. Because the pattern on the month, on the yearly chart is showing us clearly that there was a consolidation, a breakout, and a pullback. So, probably, we are in the third area wave. With the information that we have today, okay, today, okay, okay today, on the 29th of May, with the information that we have now, all we can say is that this is the first wave, this is the second wave, and this is the third wave. The move from here to here is the third wave. Why? Because this is an impulsive wave, because one, two, three, four, five. All right? If we say that the move from here all the way here is the first wave, it's wrong, because we will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wave. The first wave is not from the seven, five, seven wave, it's five wave. All right, so we will notice straight away that the first is not the first wave from here all the way up here. And also, if we go, for instance, on the yearly chart, we will see clearly that there was a consolidation on the yearly chart here, and then the price went up, and we have this red candle here. It now, on the yearly chart, you will see that the first wave, the second wave did not cancel it because, you see, the first wave, as I draw it from here, it was, uh, okay, from here, went up here. And the second way did not cancel it and come to the end of it, okay? But on the monthly chart, it looks like a, it has canceled it, all right? Use different time frame. Always use different time frame, all right? So with the information that we have today, okay, we will say that this is the first wave, second wave, third wave, and fourth wave, the pink one here, fourth wave. So we will say this is, uh, okay, we are now in the fifth wave. Why the fifth wave, if, if you go now, you see, pay attention to the orange line that I draw here. If you go to the yearly chart, I need to explain to trade that with the information that we have today, you need to understand that. So if tomorrow the price went up, went up, went up, went up, and things have changed, okay, we will see that, okay, well, this is what's going on now, okay? Unless we are using, okay, the fractal pattern to forecast the price move. This is not the exercise that we are doing here. The exercise we are doing here, we are applying the wave principle. That's all. That's all we are doing here. But if you are trying to focus the market, we will have proceeded in a different way, which we will try to go inside the first wave and see what is going there, all right? So now, with the information that we have today, without assuming anything, just following the price, we will label this, label this the wave, first wave, second wave, and the third wave, which has been divided into five waves, and we'll call this the fourth wave. Now, if traders that are following us know how to forecast the end of uh, the fifth wave, so in, at this point in time, we will draw this line, joining the high of the first wave and the high of uh, 
the third wave with the information that we have today. Okay, you can see that as the price goes above the turquoise line, you see. So as the price going up, you see that's why I stop my, uh, you see my orange line, because when I was doing this, that's why you see that's why I stop it here. I'll say possible target zone. But look, that's what I'm saying to you: be patient, don't assume anything. Try hit the target point, which is the the point where we will expect the fifth wave to end. But you have to notice that the third wave was not extended. And the first wave was not extended, there's a high chance that the fifth wave will be extended. Though on this chart, the third wave looks like it is extended. If you go, for instance, on the yearly chart, you'll see that the third wave was not extended. Look at the size of the candles. And then from the orange line, look, now we have extension taking place here. The vertical move, you see? This is an extension. Very often on the yearly chart, you'll see uh, what we call diagonal move, vertical move, which means the fifth wave is extended. This is what's going on here. With the information that we have today, that's all we can say. <laughs> now, sometimes I will say something today, I will say, so you said this before, now you are saying this. No, the market is dynamic and we cannot be static. We must follow the price, okay? All right, that's why professional and uh, market analysts will have the first wave count and we have another wave count that we call prefer wave count all right so here you see that the third wave that i draw the red line the candle you see the side they are not extended and then from here it starts getting extended now from the monthly chart you will disagree with me that the third wave was not extended but on the yearly chart it looks to me looking at the size of the candle the volatility in that time it looks to me that the third wave was not extended you see here but now what the price did the price went above okay this the two quarts trend like the high of the first wave and the high of the third wave how do we proceed now you know it you know how to focus the the end of the fifth wave okay you will draw another line here at the low of the fourth, fourth wave like this make it parallel to the top one here you know it now okay uh, okay all right you draw a line here make it parallel and then you project this channel here the, the channel formed of uh, in fact what i will do i'll color this one also in turquoise okay you project okay the two quarts okay channel to the other side equal size okay so something like this if you accept that the projection of the channel to the other side because the price went above and uh, and look what the price did here okay you project it there okay and you can keep doing exactly the same thing do not assume anything you can project it again for the second time up again if it's going up you keep doing that to determine the overbought and oversold zone. The edge of this, this point, you see, that's what professionals told you here. It's a target zone. By using this method of forecasting the end of the fifth wave, they project this channel, the first channel here. So as the price was approaching the end of uh, the second channel, they will look for opportunity. They, they will prefer to take some profit. They will say, this is the target zone for the fifth wave. Until the price, the channel is broken. All right? You see, what the price did the price went above, okay, the first trick was line, joining the high of the two, and pulled back and retest it. See, it came, pulled back, two, they bought it. It came back again to retest it. Now they are buying it again. All right? If it come out of this one again, we'll do exactly the same thing. But one thing I say to trade all the time, do not forget also the media line of your channel. Always remember the media line of your channel. This is a killer one. Where we are now, the price touching the media line of the, that channel. In my view, this stock is now in the fifth wave, which is extended. We will see how far you go until, okay, at least, uh, okay, the common central line of this fifth wave, at least if you can draw a channel to highlight the fifth wave, is broken. So it looks to me it came out of it and now it's stuck here. So if I color this also into orange, all right? Okay, that's all. Now, how do we handle it? So you count five wave, you think that the stock is in the fifth wave, and uh, you're on a monthly chart, and you are thinking to sell, all right? What do you need to do? You need to go to Google Finance. You check the balance sheet, you check the cash flow, see what's going on. You will check also the market itself, because you want to apply the market 
Okay, the training triangle. That's how professionals. You will never sell any stock without doing your verification because the natural progression of the market is bullish. That's why sometimes bearish traders get into trouble. But the smartest bearish traders are traders that understand the market. They will sell by combining the technical and the fundamentals, especially using the trading triangle. If the market itself becomes bearish and the stock is in the fifth wave and we receive a signal to sell, well, we will sell. We are not fighting the market. We are just uh, flowing with the market. I can say more about this stock, but this video is about uh, okay the first step. Uh, but how to use the wave principle? Two questions we have answered in this video. The first question is that how do we recognize a valid uh, a second wave if the second wave okay, has a candle with a long tail that went beyond okay, the beginning of the first wave? Is the wave principle okay, uh, being uh, okay, violated in this case? Okay, we need to check why the candle has a long tail. Once we are satisfied, we as a trader will decide whether we accept it. If we are labeling uh, that uh, way, second wave as a valid second wave with a long tail, we must proceed with a caution. The second question was that, has, does, uh, does uh, the, 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 the opening bell, uh, okay? Uh, has something to do with uh, the alien wave. Okay, as I show you here, sometimes stock will consolidate on Friday and come Monday will break out of the consolidation, okay, and display five wave. Or sometimes, if you are trading for us during the Asia session, very often we may have a consolidation on the 30 minute chart, on the hourly chart, and then the next day we have a breakout. Our trader must be careful about false breakout. Okay, there are videos on your to your channel. Which trader can watch on YouTube about force breakout? How do we filter out force breakout? How to trade a force breakout by George Rio? You may watch that video to know how to make an excellent decision. As I say to members of our website, to for Elliot Wave, if you have any question, post them in. But uh, I do not guarantee to answer questions straight away. Sometimes I may just send email to the trader straight away to answer the questions. Sometimes I may record a video. Or sometimes I may wait, okay, depending on what I'm trying to do during that time, I may wait. Don't think that I ignore you or I do not pay attention to your question. I may answer your question in another video completely, okay. I may highlight it and say, oh, blah, 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 and then talk about it, okay. And then if you are following us, okay, you will get your answer. Until the next time, enjoy yourself and be very happy. This is about the first step about how to use, okay, the wave uh, principle. Until the next time, enjoy yourself and be very happy. We are the TSTW SYS 008 traders. Speak to you soon.